the topic for the day is thrombosis it's an extract from general pathology so let's start with the definition process of formation of solid mass in the circulation from constituents of flowing blood this is the actual definition but to make it simple for you i'll tell you this is the formation of clot okay blood clot in the blood vessels clot is obviously a solid mass which is formed in the blood vessels that is inside blood vessels is a component of the circulation so the process of formation of solid mass in circulation from constituents of flowing blood okay and the clot or the solid mass which is formed that is called as thrombus so guys now we are going to start with the etiopathogenesis this is the most important portion of thrombosis so there are mainly three important abnormalities which leads to thrombosis first one is endothelial injury second one is abnormal blood flow and third one is hypercoagulability okay so all these three together is called as virtuose triad okay virtuose triad okay so please remember this and all these three are interlinked to each other remember this point okay so let's discuss each one of these then starting with endothelial injury imagine this is your blood vessels where an endothelial injury is formed i'll tell you the various causes for the formation of endothelial injury in the coming slides okay so imagine here an endothelial injury is formed so the platelets they start to adhere to the lining of the endothelium hmm? and later on more platelets join and they tend to aggregate along with which there will be formation of fibrin threads or fibrin threads comes and attaches to these platelets okay imagine these platelets are tied together with a fibrin thread imagine it like that so this whole solid mass that is called as the thrombus hope you got the idea what thrombus is so when an endothelial injury happens why does it happen the causes are hypertension radiation injury bacterial products metabolic abnormalities and toxins from cigarette so what happens there will be loss of endothelium and it exposes sub endothelial ecm what is ecm extracellular matrix okay so afterwards what happens is this will release the tissue factor and reduce the local production of pgi2 and plasminogen activators pgi2 is prostacyclin uh, that is an inhibitor of platelet aggregation so what happens when pgi2 reduces there will be more platelet aggregation and plasminogen it helps in the dissolution of the fibrin in the clots okay so when plasminogen also again when it reduces there will be more fibrin uh, formation okay so guys coming to the second abnormality that is abnormal blood flow before discussing in detail about this i want to tell you the difference between turbulence and stasis those are two important terms which you want to know so imagine this is your normal blood vessel okay so i'm showing you the normal blood flow okay so there are the platelets and blood cells in the center which flows in a faster pace okay which flows in a faster pace whereas the plasma which moves closer to the endothelium in a slower pace okay in a slower pace so this is how the plasma separates the platelets from the endothelium it moves in a slower pace and the center part or the lumen there are the platelets and the blood cells which flows in a faster pace so now guys imagine this is your blood vessel and at times the blood vessel may contain plaque okay plaque can be found due to many reasons which i'll tell you in the later slides so as you can see the blood will flow with a change in course of its direction instead of going straight sometimes a flow of the blood streams it undergo this turbulence that is 
it hits the plasma and there will be a turbulent flow remember the term turbulence so when the this turbulent flow happens there will be certain areas you can see certain areas which becomes devoid of this blood flow okay these areas are called as areas of stasis okay hope you all understood the term turbulence and stasis okay now let us see the explanation the clinical condition which causes turbulent and static blood flow are atherosclerosis aneurysm acute myocardial infarction polycythemia and mitral valve stenosis so these are the conditions where you can see there will be plaque formation and there will be this kind of turbulent and static blood flow okay so you should understand turbulent and static blood flow occurs only in these kind of abnormal conditions okay so when this static and turbulent condition occurs there will be few deleterious effect so stasis and thrombosis has following deleterious effects those are both promote endothelial cell activation and enhance procoagulant activity by changing the endothelial gene expression so the endothelial gene expression will be changed and there will be more endothelial cell activation and procoagulant or the coagulation favoring activity okay then stasis allow platelets and leukocytes to come in contact with the endothelium i told you before in the normal blood flow platelets leukocytes blood cells everything will be uh, flowing in the center or the lumen okay but here when stasis happen it allows the platelets and leukocytes to come in contact with the endothelium stasis also shows washout of activated clotting factors and stops inflow of the clotting factor inhibitors so that is regarding abnormal blood flow now coming to the third abnormality that is hypercoagulability okay it is an alteration of coagulation pathways that predisposes affected persons to thrombosis and can be divided into primary and secondary disorders so hypercoagulability that means there will be a change in you know there is a normal coagulation pathway in everybody's body but there will be a change in this normal pathway which will lead to thrombosis mm? so abnormal coagulation or increased coagulation will be there mm? so there are many factors which causes hypercoagulability in order to remember that i have used a mnemonic that is calm happy apes okay calm happy apes so let's see what this calm happy apes stands for so let's start c for c protein deficiency that is the liver will form a protein that is called as protein c it inhibits activated factor 5 and factor 8 of our coagulation pathway so automatically what happens if there is a protein c deficiency there will be no inhibition of factor 5 and factor 8 so the coagulation will go on okay second one is a for anti phospholipid antibody syndrome so here there will be increased coagulation due to lupus anticoagulant and anti cardiolipid ab okay then there is leiden mutation leiden is also factor 5 which is resistant to the effects of protein c inhibitory effects of protein c okay so it will cause to more coagulation m4 malignancy so malignancy is the second most common cause of hypercoagulability okay so you please remember that h or happy for heparin induced thrombocytopenic syndrome or i can put it in more simple words that is body will make antibodies against the platelet due to what due to heparin that is heparin induced thrombocytopenic syndrome 
A for antithrombin 3 deficiency as the name suggests antithrombin. So it inhibits thrombin. Hmm? Then P for prothrombin mutation. So this mutation may cause the increased activity of prothrombin which will promote the thrombin or the thrombus formation or the clot formation. E for elevated factor 8. Okay, elevated factor 8. And S for protein S deficiency or S protein deficiency. So the liver also forms yet another protein other than protein C that is protein S which acts as a cofactor okay, to the protein C. So we have done the etiopathogenesis. Now one more important part of thrombus is the fate of the thrombus. Okay. So let's see there are four major fate for the thrombus. First one is propagation, second is embolization, third is dissolution, fourth is organization and recanalization. Okay, so let's start with propagation. So this is our blood vessel. Sometimes you can see the platelets aggregating and the fibrin, but there will be more platelets and more fibrin attachment or deposition to the thrombus so this is called as propagation or the thrombus will grow now what is embolization that is as you know there will be this thrombus but it might get detached from its site of origin see it gets detached from its site of origin and move to a distant site that is called as embolization okay now coming to the dissolution so, dissolution is due to the fibrinolytic activity, okay. Fibrinolytic activity, it can happen in a recent thrombus. So, imagine this is a recent thrombus, then fibrinolytic activity can occur. So, if the thrombus is recently formed, then we can give fibrinolytic drugs, okay. And last part was organization. Organization is the ingrowth of the smooth muscles and fibroblast and endothelial cells okay then there is recanalization imagine this is the capillaries growing inside the thrombus so it might helps in the normal blood flow okay it might not be in the same pace but again normal blood flow can be established okay guys so coming to the questions uh, the essay question will come as a combination that is define thrombosis, etiopathogenesis of thrombosis and fate of thrombus. So in definition you have to write both the definition of the thrombosis as well as what thrombus is. Then in etiopathogenesis don't forget about virtuous triad and all the three factors you have to explain in detail with pictures. Okay, Don't forget to draw pictures you can draw simple pictures okay then uh, the third one is fate of thrombus okay fate you need to mention all four if you can you explain in small like in two three sentences and you add a figure if you can or else figure is not that important in this topic you just have to write the four points and just give a little explanation for each okay then hypercoagulability at times it's asked as a short note okay so the reference i have used is robin's basic pathology but you can follow your own pathology textbooks just read it then you compare with this points and your class notes and everything and if you have any doubts feel free to mail us or you can add in the comment section or you can dm us in the instagram page okay so if you like this video and if you found this useful please do like and subscribe our channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon thank you